Oh, glory. Wasn't that the presence of God phenomenal this morning? Amen. Yes. yes. If you didn't you didn't get what you needed, it's not too late. You can still jump right in. And uh, the Bible says he gives you liberally. Liber, excuse me, I shouted. I didn't know what I was talking about. I shouted myself hoarse this morning. And yeah. hoarse <laughs> but, uh, excuse me. <coughs> But he says he gives to any man liberally that asks. And sometimes we get to the point we think it's liberally that the any man that just shows up. And he will get some on you, but it's better to get it in you. Amen. And that comes by asking. The Bible says, seek you first, the kingdom of God, that all these things will be added unto you. As we were worshiping this morning, and I was going to uh, speak on the, the short message I have for you all today. Uh, in uh, second, second Timothy, uh, let me, I don't want to butcher for you, I'll just go there. Second Timothy chapter one, <clears throat> we'll just uh, start in verse five, I, I've preached and taught on this throughout the years, so I'm not going to redo that part. It says, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in me, which dwelt first in my grandmother Lois and my mother Eunice, and I'm persuaded that in me also. And we see here him talking about the power of the Holy Ghost. We see him talking about the spirit of faith. And he recognizes that it's where? In Timothy. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, this morning, you made it here. You made Jesus Lord of your life. Some of you all are tongue-talking, the Holy Ghost spitting, filled believers. And... Uh, Maybe some of you are seeking that, you know, how many know that you don't have to seek hard. He, he's, he's waiting to do it for you. So we'll go into more of that on Wednesday nights. But he didn't tell Timothy to go get something. He talked about something Timothy already had. I'm going to say it again this morning. He didn't tell Timothy to go get something. He, told, he talked, was talking to, to Timothy about something that Timothy already had. Amen. But see, just having it in this day and time isn't enough. Amen. Amen. And there comes times, well, let me just, I don't want to, I will just read it. But, and so he said, wherefore, I put thee in remembrance. And we've done this many times. He, you know, when David went and ran at Goliath, he didn't run with his mouth shut. That's right. Amen. Goliath told him everything he was going to do to him. And he told him everything he'd done to everybody else. And David didn't say, well, I whipped a bear and whipped a lion. I'm going to rip, I'm going to whip you. He said, he said, no, I come to you in the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. The same God that was with me with the lion, the same God that was with me with the bear is with me here now. And he told me just how to take you out. Mm -hmm. He didn't run at the giant with his mouth shut, did he? And he stirred himself up by the remembrance of the things that God had, where the Holy Spirit already worked in his life. How many of you we have, an, and we, Jesus said, I must go away to the comfort of heaven. You, how many of we have a more increase of that Holy Ghost in our life if we're spirit-filled and living in it today? So we have more here where we can see where Timothy had more to put a demand upon. And then he goes on, and there's some gifts that can only come by laying on of hands. We see here, that's what he reminded Timothy of. There's some things that can only come. You say, well, I don't see that in the Word. Well, you see where they laid their hands on, they received the Holy Ghost over and over again. They and so we see there's some things that only come by the, by that by an impartation. But how many can remember when God really imparted something to you? And if you were honest, there's some days here lately you would sure like to experience that again. Mm -hmm. Well, I got good news for you this morning. He wants you to experience it too. Mm -hmm. But you're going to have to lay hands on yourself this morning. As I was worshiping, that's what I was doing. I was remembering. I'm like, Lord, you said that. I was reminding him of his promises. I was remembering the word of God because his word is yes and amen. Mm -hmm. Come on. Amen. And as I put a demand upon the word, not a, depend on, not a demand on what I wanted, demand upon the word, that he came and ministered to my spirit and he stirred up things that were already in there. Yeah. See, the Bible says that the enemy comes to, to wear out the saints. Right? right, one of those ways. The main that's one of the main tactics he's used these last days is a spirit of weariness. Mm -hmm. 
You just get threadbare. And then sometimes if we're not careful, we go looking for something we've already got. Instead of standing in faith, faith is bringing the unseen into the seen. I can't see that, but I believe the word. I stand on the promises. I remember what God has done for me. I remember what the word of God says. And now I'm stirring up the Holy Ghost inside me. And now I'm bringing it to remembrance. And now I'm putting demand upon. I start bringing the unseen into the seen. Romans 15, 13 says he'll fill you with all joy and hope and peace through the power of the Holy Ghost. When I quote that verse and I put a demand upon my spirit, uh, I kind of expect the joy of God just to creep up on me. And it's okay if I start smiling and I want to laugh. I've never seen anybody be joyful that looked like they were sucking on for seven. <laughs> I've got the joy of the Lord. Oh, <laughs> come on. David said, I'll get more undignified than this. Right. If you're always worried about somebody else is going to feel it, think about you, talk about you, look at you, you ain't never going to get all that God's got for you. Because he'll make you look a fool. I've come to the point with God, and when we're going to get to the main topic, the message in a minute, that I don't care what he makes me look like. He will light me on fire, and everybody can just come to see what he's all about. They can even come to talk and laugh at me, but I know what the presence of God will do to them once they get, once they get in here. Right. Amen. And if we become that way in our, our lives, because we don't care about what people think, I'm not talking about, you know, some people just get corny. I know we're in Illinois, but you know, <laughs> I, 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 oh. I don't... Uh, <laughs> Uh, I couldn't resist. <laughs> we know. Oh, Lord help me. <laughs> Please. <laughs> We're, uh, it's not about flakes, quakes, and all the other nuts that go with it. And those things don't help the move of God. Right. You know, but sometimes, you know, if you can explain it, I bet I'd ask, is it really the Lord? Because if you can explain it, you know, it's probably not the Lord. Mm -hmm. If you figure out how it all works, you're probably already in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. You know, I said this, I said it Wednesday night, I've said it many times. When you can explain how a brown cow eats green grass and makes white milk, then you can come explain to me in detail how the Holy Spirit always works. <laughs> you all with me? Some of you still here. And so he said, I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that was first in the which dwelt my grandmother Eunice and our mother Eunice and our Lois and, and the mother Eunice and I persuaded me also if I put thee in this that thou stir up the gift of God. Now, there's people that tell you, <clears throat> I don't, no matter where, I don't know where your background is, uh, uh, we're blessed that even in this small church we've got people from every denomination, every background, and we just believe the Bible and we, we chase after Jesus, okay? Amen. I'm not here to give you a denomination to follow. But he said, stir up the gift. A, a gift is not something you can earn. Right. The Bible said, some people, when I, you know, I grew up full gospel, I still, if you had to characterize me as something, I could probably, you might peg hold me in my, at least half of that. But uh, that is not who I am. You, you, so anyways, not even going into that. But it's a gift of God. Some people used to tell you, you had to tear you. You had to get your life in order enough to get filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, Paul didn't get it that way. He was murdering Christians, and he had a he had a total uh, uh, just a movement of God right there on the Damascus Road. But guess what? He met Jesus there, changed his life. But guess what? He didn't get. He didn't get the Holy Ghost just then. He had to go and find somebody. And how would you like to have been the brother that God laid on your heart? Remember that guy's been killing everybody? I want you to go lay hands and pray for him. And I want you to give him the Holy Ghost. You'd think your number was up. You thought you got tough assignments. But I believe that brother was so full of the Lord, he had already, he'd already stirred up his gifts. He was already walking in his anointing. And in these last days, you don't have time to get ready. You're going to have to be ready. You're going to have to be, you know, there's time. You, how many know you need to start recognizing when it's time to stir up the gifts? Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't know, but you can sometimes, it's all, it, I, I, I still don't get it till my battery's dead. I realize, man, I'm dead. I need to go recharge this thing. How many know it takes a lot longer to recharge a, a dead battery than it does to maintain one? Yeah. Right. Amen. That's right. And God's wanting you to 
I believe he's calling you to daily store up the Holy Spirit and keep your batteries charged. Amen. So he said, store up the gift of God. So it's a gift. It's for free to anyone. The Bible says he gives liberally to any man that asks. Well, I don't know, Pastor. I don't know if I've got it. Well, Matt, if you don't know, you won't got it. Because you will know when you get it. And then I have other people that they're just, they're scared to death. When you come, come around the Spirit of God, let me just clarify, everybody usually sees somebody being flaky and ends up turning people off. They're like, I don't want none of that. I don't want to flop like a chicken. <laughs> come on. Let me tell you, if you really get the good stuff, you don't care. By the way, some of you did a lot more worse than that when you're out drinking the world's wine and acting a fool. And this stuff don't make you have no hangover. Exactly. It don't got no. It, it don't make you do nothing stupid. And the Holy Ghost is a gentleman. Mm -hmm. He'll never do nothing that he, that you will not allow him to do. And everything he does do is for God's edification, your glory, and, and for uh, for getting to the point of today's message. Less of less of you and more of God. Mm -hmm. And you can only do that through cooperation with the Holy Ghost. Bible says the Holy Ghost searches the heart of man, looking to and fro. Come on, are, are you letting the Holy Ghost shine the light, or are you still trying to control what he's doing in that? Because if you're still trying to control, he doesn't have free reign in you this morning. And you're not gonna have you're not gonna have full reign of him when you need him. Come on, are you with me this morning? Y'all getting something out of this morning? Yes. Listen. Does it, well, Pastor Tammy, she was all over my message again this morning. I'm going to have to kick her out, I guess. <laughs> she lives with me. She gets all this stuff firsthand. No, I don't talk a whole lot. She, I think all the kids told me one, one Sunday. You probably all don't remember. I do. They said, Daddy don't talk a lot except you're at church. <laughs> But we need to stir up the gift of God, which is in me by what? The putting on of my hands. So he gave something by the putting on of his hands. You know, there's a time, James 1, 5 says, call for the elder of the church, and anoint one Lord, and pray the prayer of faith, and he shall save the sick and raise them up. If you don't know, uh, sickness and all those things were finished at the cross. But that doesn't stop the enemy from bringing him. John 10, 10 says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He said, I've come, you may have life and have it more abundantly. So it's our job to resist sickness. Or sometimes when the assignment gets so heavy that you need to come up and have the elders of the church pray the prayer of faith. And then notice God didn't say, well, I may heal them. I may restore them. No, he said, I will. But what is it? There is, a, there is a prerequisite. He said, you've got to pray the prayer of faith. See, a lot of people show up to the altar to see what will happen. Instead of coming to put a demand upon the word of God. <coughs> Come on, are you with me? And But what happens when you start putting a demand upon the word, you start decreasing and he starts increasing in you. And as you start making more room for the Holy Ghost, which gets us, God, God spoke to me already. Usually we fast and pray for a month before we get, and he just spoke so quickly the other night, and he gave me the vision for the house for uh, 2022. And he said, more of the Lord in you in 2022. You say, well, that seems awful simple. Well, it may sound simple, but I promise you it will not be simple to do. But it will be powerful in the kingdom of God. You're like, well, what does God want us to do? Well, less of him, more, less, less of us, more of him. And then we'll see souls saved. We'll see miracles. We'll see signs and wonders because they're for the unbelievers. And we'll have to chase after them. They're to follow us. Right. You know, if you're going around following them, you're like a dog with your chasing his tail. Mm -hmm. And you ain't going to get nowhere. Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. I, but this morning as I was pressing in, I was having an amazing time. And as, as you all know, before I started resisting these things, I used to travel extensively and minister in uh, other countries. And it was so cool. God was like playing a video camera. And I was seeing some of the miracle, miracles that I got to see in my life through my faith. And, it was just it was just so encouraging to me as God was bringing, I was stirring it up and he was bringing it to remembrance. And I'm not saying this to toot my horn, but I, I watched the, the dead get raised. I watched tumors fall off. I got to watch dead people here. And I talk about those things, but it's one thing to, to talk about. They're good to edify God. There's nothing about me. I'm just a good donkey. But, you know, this morning as I was doing that, 
it stirred up that same anointing that was in me that I activated. See, when I prayed for those people, it was bringing it back fresh inside me, and it was recharging me to speak to the things that was right here in front of me today. And some of you need to do that today, and that's okay. That's good. Amen. He didn't say, for those that are less than perfect, store up the gift of God. That you can. He didn't say, for those that are just have not yet arrived. Did he? He said, he said, wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which he goes, put on the hands. So, and he said, because he goes, if God has not given us the spirit of fear. I, it, it doesn't take a rocket science or a deep theologian to realize that the enemy is is doing his very best to, to just promote a spirit of fear worldwide. I didn't say not to use wisdom. Faith and wisdom go hand in hand. You can see it all throughout Proverbs. We've studied it in depth. You can, there's about 400 videos. You can go watch and catch up. <laughs> but faith and wisdom go hand in hand. Come on. <laughs> but, you know, you can't get them out of order, but you've got to keep them in balance. But he said, God's not giving us a spirit of fear. So, but if he's telling you that, he realizes that the opportunity will constantly present itself. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember when I was a young man growing in faith. And how, how about this? Uh, we done talked about tithes. And I, I, for those that don't know me, I hate talking about money. When And I see people always chase after it. And we teach on it because God told me, you're blessed. Teach them how to be blessed. And that's the whole point behind it. And uh, we let God do the rest. But when I was first paying my tithes and offering, just like everybody that's ever done it, it looked like that I was about to just... Uh, lose everything and you know i could remember when i was down to 50 bucks and i'd be starving by the end of the week or 20 dollars or 10 dollars and there wasn't enough ramen or baloney to go around before i started paying my tithes come on y'all remember the days yep. 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 somebody remember them days pastor i'm there now well i got good news for you, you don't stay there forever amen, amen. Right. and i still remember when i was down to the same amount of money and i knew what i could do with that money and i knew that there was not enough you know you know what i'm saying it was not enough to stretch. And I remember the first time, God, I, I still had enough. And I still had the $20 at the end of the week. And I'm like, God, that, I'm, not a, I'm not a real smart man. You know, I'm a hillbilly. But I just, well, two plus two don't add up. There's something going on here. And I kept chasing. I, I remember whenever I was in ministry and I didn't have enough to go around. And the gas tank was on empty. And I drove, I drove 300 miles time and time again to minister with the gas tank there. Why? Because I... God was, I was putting a demand upon the word of God and he was responding to it. Right? right? Yeah. But as I was doing that, there was, he, he was working on stuff in me left and right. By the way, he still is. I have not arrived. Uh, just some of you may think that they're not as big, but they're big to me. Amen. I'm not trying to act like, I'm still decreasing. He's still, he, he's still increasing. And I, I've got just as much to work to, to do on me this year as you do. But it's not always, it's be, if you're not careful, you'll concentrate on the work and you'll miss the blessings. Right. God's got so much for you. Why did I go on about all those things? I put in remembrance. There was, there, God's given us a spirit, didn't give us a spirit of fear. But each time when I had to, you know, when your gas tank's on empty and you've got a couple hundred miles to go and you don't got no money for nothing, I don't care who you are, you, you're you going to start trying to get a little nervous. When the bills is due and you don't know how it's coming, you start getting nervous. But either God is who he says he is, can do what he said he can do. Now listen, I know some of you like, Pastor, some of you like, we've heard this story all many times. Get another one. Well, I ain't got any. Y'all been with me too long. Y'all include you and you don't want to be talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you know, I, uh, there was then later on after his blessing the ministry, I got where I would just, you know, I had that face. I'd drive scripty cruising on empty. Yeah. Until one day I drove by and the Holy Ghost pumped me to get gas, but I was like, praise God, I got faith and I got about 10, 15 miles down the road and I ran out of gas. Well, God, where are you at? He said, I'm right with you. I blessed your pocketbook. And you got money in your pocket, you can go put gas in this vehicle. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Amen. Come on. Faith and wisdom go hand in hand, yeah. but I as as but I tell you what, it, when you're in those when you're in those beginning circumstances, it don't take you 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 get whatever's in the way cleaned out real quick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
But today, God's asking us to start physically looking at it and realizing, God, I must need thee for any less little things. And the enemy always wants you to focus on what's the latest battle, what's the latest fight. And it's usually to keep you distracted from the very thing, the breakthrough that God has for you. I mean, I mean, you know, Goliath had all of Israel distracted. And he tried to distract David. If David would have listened to one word of what he was saying, you know, he didn't even, he didn't have any armor. He didn't fit him. David, Goliath then told him everything he was going to do to him. Everybody told him he was an idiot for even trying. You know, if you keep waiting for people to side with you and what the Word of God has to say, you're going to be waiting a long time. That's right. But you need to walk in faith by what God says. You need to use wisdom. <clears throat> Come on. We got to give you a spirit of fear, but what? Power and of love and a sound mind. How do you know the enemy wants to attack your mind? Amen. That's the, where the battlefield starts. The Bible says take every thought captive that exalts itself above what? The mind of Christ. If you don't think like Christ, you'll never walk like Christ, you'll never act like Christ. It all starts with your thought process. Right. Now, the enemy is in a battle constantly for what you're thinking of. He tries to consume your mind. And you're going to have to learn to take every thought captive. One way of making sure you do that is putting in more word of God than you put in anything, put in everything, anything else into your spirit every day. Amen. And you need to so, and then you need to think on things. And you say, well, Pastor, I struggle with that. Well, you're welcome to the club. There's not a, no, I don't think anybody just woke up one day and said, I am, I read, you know, I, I don't say this area. I read through the Bible several times a year. I won't give you a number. It may intimidate you. It used to intimidate me when people say, I, 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 dear, dear Lord, I can't get through a chapter without falling asleep. I'm just being honest. I remember when I thought I was really accomplished by something by studying one or two verses. I thought, man. I, I'm getting this thing. There's somebody else they're talking about four or five times in this book. I'm like, so what? Then, then, you know, honestly, I was one of those guys too. I thought, well, you're a pastor. I'm working 16 hours a day. This, that's great for you. And God said, oh, really? You can't give me five minutes. It takes five minutes to read it through in a year. And I, man, I still remember it. It was such, such a struggle. And now it's so easy. It's like, it's like if I don't have it, it's like I didn't eat lunch. That's right. I got to feed my spirit, man, every day. But I had to decrease, and he had to increase. Do you, I was uh, talking with someone the other day, and the Holy Spirit was ministering to him. And uh, how many know we're to crucify our flesh, man, once a year? Daily. 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 <laughs> Some of you are awake out there. <laughs> You should always check what's said with the word of God. Right. Daily crucify your flesh, man. Now, someone will say, well, why do I want to do it? Well, Second Corinthians says that old things have passed away, but all things have become new. You're a new creature in Christ. You are. But you've got a flesh guy until you are called out of this body that's going to want to try to act a fool. Amen. And you're going to have to put him in line and keep him in subjection. And some people say, well, I'm getting really close to God. When I really been pushing in, that's when it gets really hard. And I'm like, if you ever seen a starving man, they don't go out easy. Come on, I'm, I'm preaching this morning. You're all stuck in this silly chair. A starving man don't go out easy. So why are you complaining? He's about to die. That's why he's showing himself. Amen. You have been doing it right. You have been persevering. So keep on. He just upset he ain't getting no food. Come on. So keep starving him. Keep feeding the word of God. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. 1 John 4, 4, in case you need an address. Come on. And Isaiah says, no weapon formed against you. <laughs> and every tongue that rise against you in judgment, he shall condemn because that's the heritage of the servants of the Lord. There was a season in my life, I wasn't even sure if I was a, a servant, let alone had any heritage. I didn't have it even after I was born again. I really didn't know my own identity. If you don't know who you are in Christ, you can't stand in faith in him. 
You are a king's kid, a co-heir with Christ. <clears throat> Come on. You're seated in heavenly places. Get out of the sewer pit and quit, quit, quit that, going down there and duking it out with the things you shouldn't be duking it out with. Get back up into your king's place, your general's place, and start praying and, 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 and releasing the word of God to release angels on your behalf. Amen. But how do I get more of that? Well, I've got to decrease so he can increase. Amen. And then I get smarter in the Holy Ghost. Somebody said, I need some work for that. James 1 5 says, If any man lacks with them, and come to the Father with their faith waver, and it'll be granted unto them. Then it say, When they get to be a good boy, I'll give them some wisdom. When they get smart enough, when they can pray in the Holy Ghost for two days. <laughs> It said, if, you, if, if you're smart enough to realize you need some wisdom, then I'll, I am going to give it to you. Now, now, I will tell you, the more word of God you get, the more vocabulary you give the Holy Ghost, it's easier to understand what the Spirit is speaking to you. Come on. So, that was all free. Our main verse this morning is John... Well, hold on. I've got, to, I've got to juggle too many things up here to get to my notes. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, Lord. John chapter 3, verse 30. John chapter 3, verse 30. Someone moved all of my stuff. I know it wasn't me. Mm -hmm. Chapter 3, verse 30. John chapter 3, verse 30. And he's talking <coughs> about being ready, being the friend of the bridegroom, those that stand in here. And so he said, I must, he must increase, but I must decrease. We could preach a whole sermon off of that right there. Mm -hmm. Now, all through we see David, the man after God's own heart, he said, Holy Spirit, come and search me. If you find anything in me, Lord, do it. And we know that he found some stuff. Come on, David. I, I, I've always heard David was just a heathen. How did he? Because his heart was to do what God wanted. He realized he got that he was a broken, fallen man who needed the Savior, same way we all did. But he, he you know, and he, some of the stuff he still paid for. You know, he lost children, he lost some stuff, but his heart was always back towards the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. Which always encourages me. Of course, if David can get in there, that book, there's hope that I can get in there. And I've got Jesus and the Holy Ghost, and David didn't have either one of those, so I got much better chance. Amen. <laughs> I got help. I've got help with my spirit man, my flesh man. Come on. So he must increase, but I must decrease. The Message Bible says that's why my cup is running over. Now listen, I preach out of the King James. Every verse you've heard is there. I really like that translation. I realize a lot of these translations are inaccurate, but you don't throw out a dictionary just because they don't get it de 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 defined just right. You just don't make that dictionary your main topic to study. You can study all kinds of things that brings edification to the Word of God. I heard I had one old preacher one time, bless his heart, told me, if King James was good enough for Paul, it's good enough for me. I just smiled and said, okay, brother, because there was no sense arguing no more. Clearly. <laughs> If you don't know, well, never mind. If you don't know, you know. That's why my cup is running over. This is the assigned moment for him to move into the center while I slip off to the sidelines. Who is the main focus in your life? Who, 
who when you're when you're making decisions on your life, what are they based on? I'll even shorten it up really simple for some of y'all. Some of you are like, Pastor, we've heard that a long time. Who's giving the glory? I must decrease. He must increase. I don't care if anybody remembers Pastor Brian. I really don't. But I do want them to remember when they met me, they met Jesus. Amen. I want them to realize that there was a moment that that heaven invaded earth. And something they needed was imparted in through me because I had decreased. And he had increased in my life. That is my heart for 2022. It's my heart for this church that will become known as a church that's decreased in ourselves and increased in him. And when people come here, they'll meet the God of heaven. When they meet you at work, they'll meet the God of heaven. When they meet you at the marketplace, they'll meet the God of heaven. Come on, he's he's looking to show himself strong. So I remember when I was a young believer, I, I thought I told the Lord once, I, I, I told him several times, I got so hungry. I said, God, I'm tired of reading about miracles. I want to see them. Everybody keeps talking about them. I want to see them. And I, to be honest with you, I, I've got to see all those. And I thought that once I got to see them, that would be enough. But I'm here to tell you, even though you've seen them once, it's never enough because it will always should be decreasing and have increased. And I can't live off yesterday's now. I can't live off it. The, 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 the children of Israel couldn't do it. You can't do it. Everybody wants to talk about, you know, I love history in case you don't know you know. You know, it's probably a good thing as a, as a, as a Bible teacher, but I, I love all kinds of history, but I can't live on, I can learn from history, but I can't live on history. What he did yesterday doesn't sustain me today. I can stir up the gifts that are in me to believe for more of something like it, the same way we see Timothy do it, but I can't live on it. And I'd be honest, I could see how naive I was. I thought, man, if you get there, you just arrive and you just get to stay in that place. <laughs> you know, I thought, you know. But how many know even Moses didn't get to stay up in the glory car? I mean, you know, Jesus himself, the Son of God, had to get away and pray, had to go to the beaches and the mountaintops to get alone. If he had to do it, how much more? So that means I don't, my, my flesh man's going to stick around. I'm going to have to crucify the guy. I'm going to have to decrease. He's going to have to increase. I'm going to have to store up the gifts of God that's in me. And I'm not going to arrive until I get to heaven. But that doesn't mean I can't daily do my best to, to bring heaven to earth and invade. You know, I don't know about you, but when I get in the presence of God, I'm just happy. The joy of the Lord, the peace of God. And whenever my flesh man starts trying to act a fool, and it just may be, you know, if I get grumpy, I'm not even talking about doing it. If I just get grumpy or frumpy with my wife or children, the whole world knows it because it's out of my character. And I know it because my peace and joy start going, and it don't take long to realize I've got to change something. Come on. Now, my bride, she's in here today, and, uh, Bless her heart. She used to get so up. She still does get upset, upset with me sometimes. Because she'll be like, you done processed it, repented, and apologized, and I'm still upset about it. And I said, well, that's because I got years more practice doing it right now than you. <laughs> I don't mean that. It's nothing bad. But uh, I just learned that I'm not going to carry that stuff around. And some of this stuff, the enemy's hung around your neck and you're still carrying it around. The Bible says his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Take his yoke upon you. His yoke is a, gra is a necklace of grace. Grace that, that unmerited favor that you can't do anything to earn, but it's also that power that causes you to overcome. That's what it breaks down to. Come on. It's a necklace you should be wearing around your neck that, that, that says, I'm blessed and highly favored. <coughs> Some of you, that thing's got a stranglehold around your neck and it's not grace. I've seen the enemy take even the good things 
the word of God and he perverts it. Twist it. The Bible says he's an angel of light, deceiving. See, the thing about it is that most people are looking for a bald-faced lie and he comes in a twisted truth. You can see it all throughout the word of God. And it twisted all up. If he can get you to believe it, he gets you to see it. But how do you how do you stay away from that? The Bible says you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I've had the opportunity to see thousands come to get free from things. But I can tell you the hardest part in all of it is usually whenever they got to face the truth. I don't like it, you don't like it. But that knowing that, that what does God do that to beat you up? No, he knows he shows it to you so you can see it, so then you can overcome it. Because greater is he that's within you than he that's within the world. But how does that come? We have to decrease. He has to increase. It's a simple message this morning, but I pray it's starting to get in your spirit. For 2022, that's my goal. More of the Lord in me. I want it in you, but that's why it's in you, so that when you say it, it's personal to you. More of the Lord in you in 2022. Yeah. Everybody else said, yeah, you need more of the Lord. I tell you that. I know you do. But and I usually say things like this time. If you don't think you need it, just ask your spouse or the one that lives with you. But I don't think you really need to do that today. I think you already know. And I'm not here beating on you today. See, he said he gives us a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. And he reminds us of those things to store up because he knows there's times that you're going to go lose. He knows there's times that you're going you're gonna to need those things. And that's why he gives you all these tools. Because he wants you to, to grow in grace, grow in faith, grow in Amen? Amen. So uh, let's look at a couple more of these here I've got. He must increase in his prominence, but I must decrease. Jesus must become greater, but I must become less important. You know, when things always start with I, they usually get you in trouble. I deserve, I need. Does God want you to you know, is God calling you to be a, a, a 12th century monk and shave your head and live in a monastery and give up all your possessions? No, I mean, I'm halfway there. But, <laughs> but no, no. He wants to make you a living testimony of the goodness of God. He wants you to be so blessed. Now, does he do it just for possessions? I, no, I don't believe in the prosperity gospel, but I do believe that the gospel causes you to prosper. And in some sense, I guess maybe I might believe in the prosperity gospel, but not the way everybody preaches and teaches it. Because God, God does make some people pay for it, but the whole point is, is when God flows a lot of finances through you, he knows he can trust you to steward it. that will get where it needs to go. Amen. Come on. Souls are on the line. You know, I don't like to talk about money, but how many know it takes money to accomplish the gospel? I mean, Jesus even got a tax collector. I mean, his, his accountant wasn't very good. But the tax collector worked out all right, but his accountant wasn't very good. Yeah, he was focused on I. Come on. I must decrease and he must increase. It'd be nice if we just, you know, I've had lots of people, I spoke on this uh, other night, talking about when we were going deep in the Holy Ghost. Uh, you know, I had somebody, I had people come and say, I want God just to invite, I want God just to give me a gift to be able to read Hebrew or read Greek. You know, could God do that? Absolutely. God's done, He can translate you across the world. I, I've seen all kinds of crazy things that the Holy Spirit's done. But, you know, two years later, they're not my focus. I, you know, some days I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to get to A to B. Come on. Because I'm a human being, but you know the thing is, is maybe he, God wants you to pick up. When God gives you those desires, how I many know He wants you to? Faith is an action word. Right. Maybe if He wants to read Greek and Hebrew, maybe you should start studying a book that that teaches on that. Mm -hmm. 
And then maybe you, then you can ask God to help you as you apply your faith to it. Because man, that stuff can be dry, just so you know. Come on, are you with me? You know, today as you're sitting here, right now, the Holy Spirit has brought some things to your spirit already. Already, right now, that you have to decrease on. Now, listen, I'm not here to. The enemy always likes to take encouraging things that get you to freedom and rejuvenation and try to, and I've, I've seen it over and over throughout the years, to try to make, and the enemy's trying to, that's just how you preach. I, finally, I, see, I had to go to the Lord. I had, I had to say, Lord, because I don't want to be, I don't want to be a brow beater. I don't want to be somebody to beat you into something. Mm -hmm. And see, that's how God deals with a lot of us preachers. They try to tell us, it gets people to respond, respond. They always respond to encouraging folks, even for something that's, the good news. But I know today that the Holy Spirit's already been prompting you things that you need to decrease in so that God can increase. But if you're not careful, even that, you can focus on the cost of, well, I thought I was doing pretty good, and you can get discouraged instead of being encouraged. And the choice is how you respond. Do you respond to the to the, to the leading of the Holy Ghost? Or, to put it blankly, do you grieve it? Because whenever we decide to ignore it, I hate to tell you, but that's grieving. And I've been, I wish to tell you that I had not done that, but there's been times I've been like, well, we can work on that later. I got enough stuff right now. But how many know when the Holy Ghost brings it up, he's not looking for later? Right. He's like me. When I ask somebody to do something, I don't expect. It, it, I, I'm asking them to do it right then. I probably should put that stipulation on it. My wife is like this. <laughs> and by the time I ask two or three times, I'm done praying fire down. Hey, Mr. <laughs> you know, being, being in this situation, I've learned a lot about myself when I have been able to do things. And I, I'm, I'm growing. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But, uh, I believe that the Lord is, everybody in the room even right now, has, the Lord has laid some things on your heart. And I believe as you get those, work on getting those out of the way, you're going to experience an increase of the Holy Spirit like you've never experienced in your life. Amen. And I say that through the power of God. I can say that confidently, not because who I am, but because who He is. And I believe this morning, you know, as a church, we can ask Him, God, what do you want us to do? What area do you want us to decrease in? What area do you want us to increase in? Lord, what outreaches do you want us to, to concentrate on the most in 2022? It's not if we go out to save souls. I mean, no, that's a given around here. But which, which ministries does he want us to concentrate on? What parts of us does he want to decrease? Amen? Amen. These have been different times for me. Um, I can't wait to get back to normal, but I'm not sure how normal even looks anymore. But uh, thank you for coming today. Thank you for hearing the word of God. You know, if I had my way, I would jump up right now. I'd grab some anointing oil. We'd just have a Holy Ghost slap and good time. <laughs> Those days are coming again. Amen. Amen. Um, they're coming quickly. Amen. But today, I really feel like, you know, there's some things that we have to do on a personal level. And a lot of times, like I said, if, if you deal with it, you would want to come up, me lay hands on you, you leave it at the altar. How many of God does that to our time? I mean, you walk away and you, you get with it. But I believe God, the way God is talking to us right now, he wants us to, to do the work. And I'm not talking about you cleaning yourself up. I'm talking about you releasing these things into the, to the Lord piece by piece. And so there's some of these places that need some healing in. Yeah. Need some restoration in. Come on. Yeah. And as you do that, he's going to bring healing. And some of it, he's going to bring edification. What do you mean? There's some of you that, 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 that if you're, yeah, you know, I've seen some of the people the most bravado have the, uh, the uh, most uh, Napoleon uh, 
crossroads. You don't know what I'm talking about there. Uh, people that struggle with self-esteem usually have the most pride. And a lot of times, we they, they, the world would never know that that person is one that struggles right. with self-worth, self-esteem. But as you learn who you are in Christ, even if you've been, believe it, you've been a believer for a long time, if you've been underneath it, you forget who you are. And you need to renew your mind. Renew yourself what the Word of God has to say about you. Because then that changes. Because when people have that under that, they're always, they always respond to everybody around them from a place of defense. And when you know who you are in Christ, you have a confidence. And you can confidently respond to people. Because then you decrease. And that, that deception, if we have the enemies told you you are, decreases. And that and it, God increases in you as he says you are. Come on, are you hearing my heart this morning? That is what God wants for us. That's his desire. I can tell you, I didn't used to have a good self-image. I had a lot of bravado. But I can tell you, after I learned who I was in Christ, it's not that I don't care what people have to say about me, but what they say about me doesn't determine who I am or what I can and can't do. Amen. I've had a lot of people tell me they were going to destroy me throughout my life. And you know what? Not one of them has succeeded yet. Amen. Now, did I enjoy the season? No, but I can tell you why. I, I, I did something. I, I, God spoke to me many years ago. He said, keep your mouth shut and your heart right and let me do the work. Amen. And as I've done that, <coughs> he's done the work. Now, there's there's been seasons I've had to chew my tongue off. <laughs> and I feel like, God, I have a right to defend myself. He said, well, you've got the right. Will you say, uh, Do you want to do the work or do you want me to? Come on, that was for somebody today, and yes. you can take that home. But I can also, I want to I want to impart this to you if I can get this in your spirit. I just feel it. It's good. Uh, it's, it's the anointing is strong. I want to get that. You know, it is fun to decrease in the Lord to increase. It is fun to get a fresher flow and a deeper flow of the Holy Ghost. There is nothing better than getting the joy of the Lord. There's nothing better than having the peace of God that passes all understanding. The peace of God should be so prevalent in your life it becomes a compass to everything you do. If you don't have peace, you shouldn't go there. Come on, you never know what the Lord's keeping you from. You, you know, I won't go into all that glory. But just let God work on you. Some of you need to stir up the gifts. Just lay your hand on your belly. Just let's do that real quick. Lay your hand on your belly and say, Lord, 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 Lord I stir up, I stir up the, gifts the gifts that you've already put in me. And, and I put a demand upon the anointing to work in my life. And I expect, and I expect an, increase an increase in the Holy Spirit. In the Holy Spirit. Today, today, tomorrow, tomorrow this, week, this week, and this year, and this year. in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Woo, glory. Yeah, it's all right. Hey, you know, I see lots of people at the same bar, and not all of them are drunk. <laughs> so I said, you shouldn't talk that way in the house of God. Well, they, when the apostle stepped out, he said, these aren't drunk as you suppose. You know, if people ain't thinking you are acting drunk half the time, you probably ain't been drinking enough. <laughs> just throwing it out there. Yeah. I like to get, I like to just have a good time. So, you know, boy, some of you, some of you just get a good old Holy Ghost down. So not, it's coming. God bless <laughs> And the Holy Ghost all this year on Wednesday nights as we're going very deep. It's going to be it's going to be very good, mind blowing, and I'm expecting just some phenomenal things this year. And wrapping up in, in my first closing. Look, it's two minutes to twelve. You can beat the Baptist to lunch. Get leftovers. They. Uh, 
thank you all for praying for me. We had uh, the first encouraging uh, report this week in, in a very long time. And Hallelujah. Things that had, had uh, increased over 50% in one treatment. Woo -hoo. Hallelujah, that's awesome. Like, awesome. like, like a, a year's worth there. So uh, they were even said, well, if this keeps up, you may be done by this Wednesday. So, and so wow. that's what we're believing right. for. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a miracle. God's speaking right. to them. They're blown away. They've never, they're like, well, we know what we're supposed to do, but we can't do that. So, <laughs> I know the guy that can. We've seen a lot of people's souls saved through it, you know. God works all things together for his good. Did he bring this? Absolutely not. But can he use it for his glory? You bet. Amen. Have I enjoyed it? Some good fried meat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, you know, for years going through up this, they told me you're just going to get you in a wheelchair. I'm going to take your legs. And finally, I got to the point. You know what? He's not going to do that. He has no authority. And come on, I'm not confessing that. I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to run the fuse. I'm going to, I'm going to jump. I'm going to shout. I'm going to get back in shape. And I'm going to be in other countries very soon. Amen. It's been seven years, but I'm, I'm going. They're still waiting. That's pretty good. They're still waiting, and Amen. holding the spot after seven years. But I'm going to get there, and so are you. Amen. No season lasts forever. Amen. I know some of you, when you've been going through your seasons, so just like I went through mine, you're like, "Yes, Pastor, but does it have to all be winter?" <laughs> <laughs> but no season lasts forever. <laughs> Be encouraged today in the spirit of the Lord. Amen. Grab a hold of some of that joy that's in the house. Take it with you. Get as much as you want. There it is. It's got rising. It's funny to watch some of y'all try to control yourselves. The anointing rises. It just, you know. But remember here. He gives to those that want to that want to drink. Amen. <coughs> Some of y'all. Oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Just go ahead and bless him, God. I saw it in the spirit, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it. It may not be everybody. I haven't ranked it up, but I just I saw it. It's a pretty unorthodox. Let's bless the devil, son. We'll do it that way. And, uh, and Lord, just I just felt I saw myself. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it out loud just for somebody here, and it's out of character for me. But I just saw myself taking a big old ball of joy and throwing it and hitting Heather right in the face. With it. <laughs> and so I just do that right now prophetically. I mean, just boom. And then a whole bunch of stuff just washing off of it. See, she didn't, she had, that's how she was gone. And I've kind of seen the same thing with Deb, just back, you know, and Pastor Tammy. So he can just throw one at everybody. Listen, I ain't really throwing nothing. You're just responding to the anointing, and we're out of here being flaky. But through that prophetic thing, you open your spirit up and receive. He gives to any man that asks liberally. Like Sister Becky years ago during a time like this, she was like, dear Lord, do not let him talk to me. Don't let him look at me. And now she's just going, I don't know what's coming, but I'm trying to be ready. <laughs> so wherever you're at on that scale, you're in good company. We've all been there. But when he said, I give to any man liberally, <laughs> and as pastor, you want everybody to drink. You want everybody just to get all that they need, because the Holy Ghost can do more in a few minutes than I can do in 50 years. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> Well, I don't know what to do with this one. 
is. I thought I was. I guess I am dumb. <laughs> so, just take what you have, Dingo. It's good to get more gold. But it's not just a cool saying. It's not just a slogan. It's a deep work that God wants to do in us this year. And it's going to be good. This is for somebody. I've studied for, for years about the, I love Acts, as you know, it took me a couple years to teach it. I've studied in depth. When I go to third world countries, Lord Heather needs some love. Uh, I went to third world countries, and uh, people receive so easily over there. And uh, do you know whenever the Holy Ghost fell, he didn't, he didn't fall on the religious folk? He fell on the ones that said, they, they called them unlearned. God didn't have to push through a bunch of head knowledge to get to it. Amen. Not that the, the unlearned finally got some, but sometimes we can become so learned that we don't have that childlike faith to receive what God has for us. Sometimes our head's screaming so loud we can't just get what we need from God. And God wants us just to be like a kid and say, okay, God, Lord, that was for somebody. Somebody just tapped in. Somebody just put a demand upon the anointing. More, Lord, more. More. Ha, ha, ha. Yes, Lord, more, more. Restoration, rejuvenation. Yes, Lord. We speak to the spirits of depression. God, to be broken. The rejuvenation. And joy and peace. God just to replace them in hope. God, you're the God of hope. They can confidently anticipate the promises of God. Yes and amen. God, where, where hope has been deferred, God, I speak life right now to people's spirits. Life. Life. They can hope. They can dare to dream again. Lord, crush dreams. We breathe fire and life back into them right now. Where the enemy has said he wrote the book and it's done. God said, I didn't say I was finished yet. I have plans for you and a purpose and a future. God, God is declaring those things over your life. Dare to believe that God has good things for you. In Jesus' name.